Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Rawr. <laughs> Kaboom! My name is King Lagazi, the Seven Star General, the host of Yard Settings on Assassin Radio, an award winner as well, and an MC for Lagazi Sound International. Ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, tune into the lion voice because time to tell our own story. So are you me, man? The lion coming on and boom and tell its own story. Africa and the world, tune in, lion voice. <laughs> Sister Mimi, you are there, you grew up there. Is this, you think that is accurate that there are over a million to three million Rastafari? You said there are plenty, but... In your iris, you know, moving around, what what do you think that number is accurate? Ah, yeah, yeah. I, it's a tricky one because now, if they're talking about those numbers, that means I must count those ones who are the children of the Rastas who are not the Rastas. If I must go to millions, here yeah, can I. I must count those ganja men who always come and puff ganja and go to the gatherings because they buy, they buy ganja from us, then they hate me saying I'm going to the gathering. And then those ones, then we, when we're having festivals, they come and they're number one friends, they're always there. They talk about Rastafari, but they take the alcohol and do whatever, whatever. Because really and truly, if you are saying, uh, we talk about the Rastafaras who are having belonging, where they belong, no matter the structure or the movement. Yes. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They're exaggerating. Whoever that was coming without number, he was just maybe making estimations, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rough estimation. We are not even million rasters in South Africa. Uh -uh. I don't want to say, but I know we are plenty. Well, lion voice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion voice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion voice, with the lion cubs we sacrifice. Lion voice, got to show the people them the life. Lion voice. Well, great is the Almighty, yeah. and greatly to be praised in the city of Haile Selassie the first, the mountain of His Holiness. Yeah, from Cape to Cairo, from Timbuktu to the Nile, you know, the whole entire continent. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, from Accra to Isamaba. Sanitation to build the ecology. We utilizing green technology. We hailing highly Selassie first without apology. And then we build the youth them economy. We dismantle Babylon monopoly. We teach the youth them how to live properly. Tell them make sure them got the title for them property. Yes, this beautiful Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, the first. Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Wazero Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, a.k.a. the Chas Match Kwasi, a.k.a. Ras Kwasi, a.k.a. the Reading Ras, a.k.a. the Pan-African Happy Man. Creative industry attorney, I'm an artist, I'm an author, I'm an actionist. And right now, I am the host of Lion Talk. Welcome to the Lion Voice Network and welcome to Lion Talk, the show where we are bringing frontline soldiers in the vineyard of Rastafari and the Pan-African struggle uh, to the global family. We are reshaping the narrative that Rastafari is not doing anything, that Rastafari is divided. We are 
dashing away that narrative because we know that ones are working, ones are connecting, we are rising, we are moving, you know, uh, day by day. And it's a great honor for I to really bring this guest today all the way from the motherland. This is our first interview with someone in Africa. This sister will break the seal for the channel. Um, but this is going to be the first of many. I have many brethren and sisters on the continent, as the item know. Um, actually, no, not, don't let me say that because I just remember I have my brother, <laughs> my brother from Ghana, who I interview already. So don't let me say the Kojo Colombo. Uh, so this is the second interview from Mama Africa. We're going to have many, many more interviews. This sister is doing mighty works in South Africa, straight out of the yard of the Ayabingi. Uh, she has been the connection for I and I. She has been there in the early stages of the association of Rastafari Creatives, tuning in from South Africa on all of the meetings during the COVID time. She's always been contributing uh, to the Chan group, to different uh, groups, making that effort to really connect us to our brothers and sisters in South Africa that they say is the largest concentration of Rastafari on planet Earth. We are bringing the story from the lioness herself. Sorry. Welcome, Sister Bimi. Sorry. Hey, give thanks. Give thanks, Rastafari. Hey, love. Hey, love. Yes. yes. Greetings once more again to, to the Rastafari family communities all over the globe who are connecting in this time, you know? And those who will see later still, we're still creating the mighty name, Grimao, Grimao, Haile Selassie I, in the name of Empress Waizero Menenai, Royal Balance of Irishan, and I read us. And I give thanks even for the Sabbath day for Anai to be observing in this level, in this time. Uh, I still know, I don't believe, but I know that we are the living words and works of His Imperial Majesty, because here we are, we are gathering to raise up the banner high and reflect, you know, and and still uh, hail up those who still doubt that this liberty is the Ivan order that was um, like established in Ethiopia by this imperial majesty. Yes, other people still doubt, even here in South Africa. Other ones they want you to prove. So we are saying we are the living proof that the descendant of King, uh, the descendant of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. His, his Majesty, Kremawa Haile Selassie, uh, without no doubt. So I know it's, it's, it's blessful to be hosted by the eye, you know. Uh, finally, we are here. <laughs> I've been asking, but it's so funny that not so long, I think last wrong, I said to myself, I think Raskwas is supposed to be having interviewed me by now. And when I got a call from the eye, we catch up in so many things, but I should testify that. So I was everything happened in that divine time. And I hope that um, I will share as much information that can assist certain ones and ones in terms of those who are looking forward for repatriation, collaborations, you know, unity, strength, they all works in all aspects. So I'm the cannabis producer, farmer. I produce cosmetics. Uh, I produce sulfur ointments like supplementary medicines, health supplementary medicines. Uh, we, we say indigenous knowledge over the western nice energies and medicines and all that so i've been running this company for some years but i registered it um officially 2017 uh, before that i used to be in part of many many organizations but before everything i grew up in hila prastafara for 15 years of age since i was healing from the nyabingi order i'm still here and standing strong to say I have learned from the Gonguru when he said the ganja is a cash crop. We must okay. see it as a money mint. Yeah. So I have learned from that. Yes, I. So I'm part of organizations, the cannabis act activist, because yeah. in South Africa there's a great opportunity. Oh, hold on the there, hold on there, my my, mm -hmm. my beautiful sister. Stick a pin. Let us take it from the beginning. Where were you born? You know, what was your journey to to Rastafari? Paint a picture. We want to know. You know because. Um, you are you're in the motherland already. You know, we 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 seek his face. We we we're desiring to return home. You're you're in Mama Africa. Where were you born? Where in South Africa? What was your journey to Rastafari? 
Yes, I give thanks for that. I am talking as if the listeners and the viewers they know me. <laughs> give thanks. Give thanks for being the aspect of your work, Raskwasi. I, I was born in the belly of Azania of South Africa called the Free State. Is the country in the middle. We have nine provinces, so we border about five. So we are inland. We are not in the coastal. Yes, I. So I was born in the Free State in the city that is called Velkom. Welcome, it's welcome. One of those colonized cities. Okay. Uh, the region, the, the, again, we have a province, it's a country, province, region, and local. So on the regional level, uh, the province is free state. On the regional level, I come from gold fields, usually Pumzwa. Gold fields is where you get the fields of mines. There's a lot of gold. Even our Africans are still doing it. And they say it's illegal, it's black market. So I come from the gold fields in Machabe. So okay. yes, I, what, what is the name um, of the kingdom? What is the name of your kingdom? Was it or was it Zulu's house? Uh, what was the what was the name Soto. of your Indian people? Basoto. Basoto. The, the free state, yeah, free state. It's Basoto. Basoto. Not Lesotho. Lesotho is a country. Yes, yes. It's, a, it's our neighbor. Actually, we know you are one big family. It was just the 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 the, the, the colonizers who came and come with the borders. But free state and Lesotho used to be one. Okay. One place, yeah, okay. called Lesotho. Yes, okay. I. That time before they can change it to to, to yes, names, yes. Can but it's one people. Yes, the people call the Basotho people. Basotho from Kimushwe, but now in Free State, you you get other tribes because of the gold mines and people who were coming here for 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 work and purposes and all that. So it's it's Basu background, but uh, hosting like Kosa and Zulus, and then we have Batwana. Because okay. part of the another part of this free state was for King Mangope, Hoshi Mangope, whereby it's Tabancho, Blue Fountain side of the free state. So it's dominated by Setswana. But my background is Sosotro. So we are one big family, Rastafari family. Okay. I, I give thanks that you know about Kosa and Zulus. Yes, yes. yes. From is it, is your, your indigenous language, does it also contain the click sound? Your your native language? Not like Kosas. Basutu, it's like it's more flat, not sharp, like that clicking of the tongue. It's the cosas. But Susutu, we have Bomuchocho. Muchocho is not a clicking, but it's CH, uh, uh, the way it's written. So we have like Bo, Bakwena, Barolong. So it's not really a clicking. Basutu, yeah, it's a little bit flat, but boldish. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I helped Rastafara from 1997, whereby there was a trot of, of Bongo time, they come with the mandate, you know, <laughs> those vibes, they made I know who is today because 1997, there was the uprising, uh, it was the day of the uprising whereby in Free State particularly, there, there was this prophecy that Mandela was coming and saying the Rainbow Nation must stand up and must stand, you know. So now the, the, the Rastafari was interpreting it in that way that I and I are mighty race, we must rise up and all that. And yeah, there was just that vibe where the Rastas was going to the corners of the streets, at the stadiums, if it's a school, a sports days and what, and, and passing the word sound, you know, that people will say maybe it's a gospel, but rebuking and conscientizing people that there's a Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is not on Sunday, the seventh day, uh, Saturday, and then they'll be talking about Mark of the Beast, you know. So for me to give it attention, the reflection, I won't lie or beat around the bush. I was very young, 15 years of age. I was comfortable to give it the audience to the brethren because they were quoting from the scriptures that from the number six, you must let the hair of your, the hair, the hair of your head to grow, the vow. So my cousin brother, Judah, he used to be the boy child. Now he will be free to go and mingle me as a girl, child being that young i was more reserved in the backyard and getting the word sound more time from him but when i get opportunity i know they're at that corner or wherever i will make sure i pass by those brethren i will listen to them but i will interact and ask questions you know and there was particular brethren Mutaba Uka, a very wise rasta yo that one was getting certificates and things at the high school so i was at last year of my primary school okay. of which was grade five and so I was standard five that time grade seven and then he told me, like, if you want to go, because like, he's asking, where are you going to school? Yes, Tolopele, what grade? Grade 7. Next time you go to high school, you can come to my high school so that I can every time give you this info. I made sure I went to that high school and still get to be closer 
when I get the chance as an elder, because he was doing maybe his last year now or second years before he can exit the high school. So I will every time hear this, my brethren, my cousin brother will come and tell us and discuss with us. We get the codes every day, every day. Still, I find like, wow, this is the way of life, you know. My my parents didn't agree. My mom went to the hospital. She was sick with the gallstones, yes. you know, that sickness of the day. She went very long at the hospital. She ended up doing the um, operation and all that. And my brethren was every time coming with this sweat sound, with sound. And then I tried to be Rasta. Now, my mom is sick. We must be moving to my grandfather's house. Okay. Wow. When I go to my grandfather's house, it's a part of the Christian churches and all that. Sunday, when you eat, you eat from the table with fork and knife. And I don't eat meat. And I'm very young. I can't even say because <laughs> there's this thing of people are aware. Because it was Rastafari versus the Christians, you know, there's those crusaders, the Christians, they do, they yes. play the bands, group, group, they pray fire, fire. So my aunties, my mom's sister was on that church and she didn't understand because they love me. That time I was angry because I think they don't love me, you know, starting to, to really feel bad. And I told myself one thing, one day I'm going to grow and I'll make them understand why I'm Rasta. I will never change. I'll stay Rasta. Now, at the school, dreadlocks, they don't want dreadlocks. I make afro, they still don't want afro. Ooh, at home, they don't even know I'm having this kind of hair because I already, every time, having some 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 heads to put, you know. Now, it came to the school that I must hide myself under the table <laughs> because that last teacher is going to look at me. If I'm there, I'm a problem. I must go and change that. At the assembly, I must hide myself. So. My mom didn't understand about this. My family didn't. So, so hold on, hold on. They, 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 didn't, they didn't let black girls wear natural hair at your school? Yes, the Afro. I had the Afro because they didn't want the dreadlocks. Yes. Uh, the the, the yes. dreadlocks you cannot have. But so, then the Afro you can have. But my Afro was like not a fashion type of thing. It was just a natural hair. I'll try to do some flat it in the way they don't want that. So now I had to choose. Hmm, I comb, I cut. I had to comb, keep on combing, combing, combing. Till now, some it was a point whereby I must take out the three colors beads because maybe they're giving me this vibe. But my mom, when she came from the hospital, she was more in terms of like asking what you understand, what is about this, you know. And then if you compare, because they think reggae music is a church music, they say, you're going to go to the church of reggae, you're going to be singing reggae when praising Lord, what, 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 what. I don't have to make them understand, reggae is another one for entertainment, we have the other one. But they didn't allow, so I had to hide myself that I don't eat meat. I'll just eat, but not swallow, find excuse of going out so that, you know. But later, later as I grow, I ask my mom that I must go to the college because the high school, you know, I, I, I can only put a, a, a skirt when I'm at grade 12. And remember, it's just my first day at high school. I'm already finding difficult. Maybe for two years, I went to that school and she took me to the college. At the college, I can express myself the way I want to wear. I will put a hat, whatever. And then the other day, I had to lie at home because there was this gathering now, Bongo Times report, whereby it's a national gathering. He could not reach my province, but it was at the last province, uh, Northern Cape. So the elders from Cape Town that was coming, I didn't even know that. I just knew Rastas are going to one of these gatherings and every time I cannot go because they don't approve me being a Rasta. I'm Rasta by myself and hiding myself when I get inside. Outside, I'm conscientizing people in the street. When I go inside the house, back to square one, you are just a child. When you eat what is there, you can't even buy yourself clothes. Ah, So now I have to be industrious. I must start to do my own skirts, you know, I will do labor at the college. At the college, I was having an opportunity to keep the money and just make labor or so whatever that I want to, to wear. Because my parents, they just go and buy things for me. Sometimes I don't want them anymore because yes, now I'm changing. Yes, yes. So now... So you, are, are you wearing long skirts at this time? You're wearing long skirts, you're covering your head out on, on the road. Since then, since then, since when I was young, yes. getting opportunity What, what are the other there, South African... Because... Cause, we know that South Africa is a lot like the West. Are the other African women in South Africa wearing long skirts and covering their hair as well? Or are you standing out from the other females your age group? Yeah, my age group, the, the more time likes to to be nice by the, the way they say. <laughs> but there's, there's particular churches or traditions whereby they must still wear their skirt, the middle cover. Okay. Yeah, like the ZCC, there's a Zionist church that their woman every time, every time we're like, those weapons, maybe it's by like us who find that, you know, it's a bingy, but sometimes you get surprised. Why now? You know, 
So the majority is us Rastas who always strictly wear like that, okay. but we have the Zionist church and the the kind of different Zionist churches is the one that likes to wear like that. Unless you go to the villages, at the villages it's a norm, but for old women, the youngsters, they get more um, exposed to the TV and the media, you know, and they see artists, they don't know, everybody you see on TV, if it's not news or documentaries or whatever the thing, but most is artists, whatever the level of what we are viewing. So they will want to live that life and not knowing that they just get misled. So I, I used to wear like that, be different. And since then, since then, since then, I never found myself wearing a pants or regret putting a turban or making an excuses of not putting it or whatsoever, you know. Actually, we influence the other ones because they, they want to be like Kamsams, you know, whereby they, they, are, they are like those artists who just come and wear. We appreciate love that at least they're expecting, they are, they are accepting the, the African and cultural heritage, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yes, I so since then I grew up and being very industrious from there, I used to, to sell from the college, either baking the ganja cakes, you know, or selling the wool stuff. Because I, I started with the beads, using natural, natural, natural uh, beads from the trees. Like you cut some seeds, some type of, most of the time the seeds, and some sticks of the ganja, start doing the, the beads and the frames for the photos with another brother, brother, who be, he used to do nice uh, window, into, picture frames with the bugs of the tree and just put the varnish and all that. So used to go to him and sell for him. And then I do also my stuff. Since then, since then, I love taking business. I started this uh, uh, business management at the college. I did public administration. And later, some two years ago, I did facilitation, moderation, and assessment course besides the short courses, because I did a lot of, I uh, used the opportunity. I'm one of the sisters who don't just sit down and say Babylon system. I have made use of this benefit uh, in South Africa, you guys have an idea. Yeah. The and, and we can, we can see open. that. We see that because of how you reach yeah. out international. Um, so, so hold on, stick up in. What age did you decide to finally um, put your hair into locks? Did you lock up your head? You okay. put on your cover uh, What what age? And what year? It was it was 1999. Okay. Yeah, it was 1999. I was born 1997. I, I was born 1984. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I I, 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 I hail up I hail up Rastafari from uh, 1997, but I got my little freedom uh, from 1999. Because that is when I said, because I was using dreadlocks during the, the, the school holidays. I would make dreadlocks and I would be free. But then come when the school open, I must um, change again to suit the, the environment that I'm going to. I, w I just want to calculate because one thing about me, né, I have not been checking the size of my locks. Because people will ask you, when did you have your dreadlocks and how long is it? I will say, I don't know because I don't make it my duty to be every time checking this nature. Even the years, how long I was Rastafari, I don't know, but I would just like to, <laughs> to, to just work it out. Otherwise, um, I'm much more involved in, 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 in community uh, yeah. projects uh, through the art and culture uh, department, you know? And then I've, I've, I've done a lot of uh, groundwork with, with some movements, the reggae movement, All the right. Nabingo order. Host, uh, wait, wait one moment, wait, wait, wait one moment, because you, you left us in suspense. Did you make it to that gathering with Bongo time? Did you have to sneak out of your house? How you reach that gathering that was not in your province? No. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It was, it was in, it was in my province, but on the other town, Blue Fountain. Okay. Blue Fountain is next to next to Northern Cape. Bongo okay. time stopped at Northern Cape. He did not come back this way because he arrived from Johannesburg, Houghton province by Bongo Zato. And then he went Cape Town from Cape Town. Mama B was also there. Mama B refused to go back since then. And then <laughs> he went to, to, to Cape Town and then Northern Cape. They, they went like that. So by the time he reached Northern Cape, he's supposed to reach Free State, but it's only the elders now because I think he had to return. And the elders came. When the elders came, I had to lie. I don't remember. I said I'm going with a school or something at home. And that day, I didn't want anybody to see me outside. Since I was waiting inside that house, so that by the time we are leaving, we're just leaving. I can be out of my town or my city, and then I can be free by the Rastas. And we left very late. You know, Rastas sometimes, more especially here, they will idle. You find that time is moving. 
But for me, there was something in my heart, hey, you, you know, you're not supposed to be here and go, but I'm there, you know. So it was one of those, and very risky. Imagine, should something happen, and I went to the Rastas, while I'm saying, maybe some trip, the school trip. But then that it was the courage, and knowing very clear and well inside my heart that there's nothing wrong from hailing the most high. It's just that I see this way of life in another way that they are not exposed to because they're Christians like that, yes, you know? Yes, yes. So, yeah. so, so um, as a young woman, what was your first, um, how did you end up in the, in the Naya Bingi house? Okay, I was just counting here from 1999 okay. to 2020. It's 25 years. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I don't count another two years from 1997 because 97, only I was eating meat. I told them meat is not my thing. I was eating it in that way. I was learning. It was very hard. So, Bingi, for me to be a Rasta, it was a transformation of the 12 tribes because the Bongo time has just come. He came with, with, with guidelines. Bongo, Elder Jabuliano was there. You know, coming with the administration of the Nyabingi and explaining everything, everything. So for me, when I went there in that meeting, it was when they were establishing Rastafari National Council because Bongo Time was telling them that uh, you must centralize and organize. Actually, Nyabingi was brought by uh, Elder Bonajis before Bongo Time. Yes, uh, Bongo Time was coming with the mandate of the I and I must come together, centralize and organize, you know, come to one uh, council. So it was a Rastafari National Council. When we arrived there, the sisters from my province, they were not like uh, uh, informed enough that there's going to be elections of the national structure. But the other provinces whereby the Asian did trot from Houten, they knew when they came. I remember Rastauta was still there, Bingi. He came with the Empress, Sister Pini, the late Sister Pini. And then other sisters like Sister Lulu from Houten, they were ready to serve in the council because they came with a, a, a background of what is happening, unlike some of us. Most of the sisters where I come from, they were the queens of the brethren. Not the Rasta, Rastafari woman hailing him like that, but because of the love of the most, that always bring us together. And then down the line, you find that 99.9 .9 of them, they're not Rasta in the Rastafari way of life anymore in terms of keeping the isopos and the fundamental uh, way of life, you know. But then we still clash and we don't argue, we just heal the most that we still have life, of which is precious more than everything. So, yeah, it was like that gathering and there was a national cancer set. But for me, when I went there, it was more the brethren now coming to the Nyabingi order, leaving the 12th tribe, because everybody who was rising Rastafari, automatically, you're becoming a 12th tribe of Israel. Because the Rastas were talking about the Sabbath observance and then the mark of the beast and the tribes. They would always tell you what month you born, what you represent, these are your colors, or your workshop functions and all that. So I, I just be, got opportunity to be amongst the eyes, whereby it was that transformation now of saying, we must also balance in this way, having the order and having all the, the council set up and all that, you know. So for me, I just held up in a bingy uh, uh, house in, in Belcom, whereby we used to keep the Sabbath in that small house with the cross. We will go, the brothers will go maybe Sabbath, uh, Friday night. I will get them Saturday uh, morning. One brethren called by the name of Yellow. He's the one that took my hand and said, Yeah, let's go that side. Because every time when there were 12 tribes, I used to just love my heart to feel like, Oh, I must go with these people, but I can't go with them, you know. Hey, I must go with it. And that time when they pray, they take out the bells, take out the shoes, they do whatever, whatever. And I think, Oh, hey, this way of life. But I was not really, really like taking it easy because there was a moment where it was 1997 when my cousin and the other Rastas decided that they are going. They're going to Ethiopia by feet. Imagine from South Africa, I must check the map. And <laughs> you, you can just think, uh, these brethren sometimes the vibe was too much. Yes, the, yes, the vibe yes, yes. Got there. I, I'm, I'm laughing because, you know, hearing about one's trading up. Because I remember as a youth, the zeal, you know, when you first come into the liberty, the zeal and all of the things you think you're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Babylon falling and you know what I mean? So. To hear that uh, on the continent it manifests where people saying we're gonna walk to Ethiopia, you know what I mean? That's a serious walk, you know what I mean? If My you <laughs> we still have to have no comfortable shoes, no, no navigation, no, not even a cell phone. We can't even ask you, my brother, because I was crying. 
I come back from school one of the Fridays, my cousin is gone. Rastas are gone. They're leaving to Manzan. Mark of the Beast is coming. They were saying Mark of the Beast is coming. Triple Six is coming by the year 2000 or something. But not ready. They're making their way out. They're wearing only soldiers, camouflage, combat, you know. 24-7, only in the military. Yo, I from Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. The, 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 the internet cut again. Say that again. You said they were wearing all military gear 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 365. They will change with the colors and things, but they will always have the military gears on them. Brown, green, and the shoes. Imagine having that tough Gideon boot to travel for weeks and months to Ethiopia. So some of them, when they reach where I stay now, they got a blast on their feet. They could not walk. I, uh, you know, my cousin went to stay with some China men and his friend, a Rasta friend then. He adopted them. You don't even know where they are. When they come back, they tell us stories. The other one went this way. The other one went to Koakwa in that Jerusalem repatriation land because there's Mount Exodus. <laughs> So 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 let's 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 jump forward because you're saying that once had put on their Gideon boot, they were in the military outfit ready to walk to um, Ethiopia, and then it didn't work out. And how long were they gone for? Hey, they went for the months because they they got to they scattered along the way because the other one's destination was at the same province, but three hours away as they wanted to go through Mount Exos. They say that the same Mount Exos connect with Axum. When it reached Ethiopia, it's called Axum. I don't know, I haven't proven that. But the Mount Exos is one of the, <laughs> the biggest mountains and terrible mountains, mysterious mountain. So they went there, but there were some, some things. They didn't go Aire, but there was a match. I remember one of the first match of the Ganja it was that side of Jerusalem and the Rasta. Some of them stayed there behind. Some of them only reached Rustenberg, of which is Rustenberg with a car. It's about four and something hours uh, to, to, to drive, you know? So and from 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 Velkom to Rustenberg, it's about four and something hours drive. And then with the, with the feet, I don't know how many days did they walk. But my cousin took something like three years not coming back or something, not coming back, only to find out him and his other friends, they went to get adopted by the China man who was rich and teaching them whatever, I don't know. And then the other brethren, they stopped somewhere. I don't know the other ones, what happened to them. I don't even know how many were they, but we meet them anytime because that time they were not using roll on, even myself. 1997, I was not using a roll-on when I was going to the primary. I was not using um, the cold gate. I was using ash, you know. I was not using the lotion, using the avocado. And you say everything with the barcode. It's a, it's a system, Babylon system, triple six, you know. So mm -hmm. it was in the, that level whereby later, super later, Ital, I super to come back one by one. Some of, some of them, super idle, but something funny. Some of them, when they come back, they're not trust us anymore. I don't know. Yeah. They were punishing themselves. Yeah, or what? they were just because extreme. Them... Yeah, they were just extremist uh, mentality. It didn't. It, it wasn't <laughs> rooted. We have that on this side too, because we had brethren who went into sackcloth and were doing all of these things, and some of them are not Rastafari today. So, what was it all about? You know. So I I, I understand what the eye is saying. So how did the people smell without the roll on? What was happening with the smell of the family in those days? With, with the roll on. Yeah. No, you weren't using roll on. Were you using anything else instead of roll on, yes. like lime or what? What? How how did you control yes, the body yes. smell? <laughs> I think I was, <laughs> I think I was young. I was not having a bad odor, but I used to use ash for okay. my teeth. I don't remember here what I was using, but I never had personal hygiene issues. But some of the eyes, it was a problem because it's like when you're resting, you must smell feet, and I have problem because it's my 
anything must be straight and for realness you deal with. So this one now, since, 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 and now my background, it was that part whereby my parents did not allow me to be a Rastafari because they don't understand this. There was nobody who was Rasta before, especially with my auntie being that part of the Christian way of life and because they love you. So in a way, they must protect you from everything because you are young, you cannot just be this that they don't know. So I, I was using avocado and lemon. I used to use lemon a lot also. Hmm, I remember the other brother was complaining about this empress. He said, Sister Mimi, please talk to her. Just look at my wife. She don't use it. And then you check the feet. It's like the map of Africa. The skin is not nice. But wow. because of the love of Farai, uh, people were soldiering on like that. Yes, sir. Okay. I tell life. I tell liberty. I tell liberty <laughs> to the extreme. Um, yes, sir. So, so, and, and, so. and not so long. Not so I was, I was saying that not so long, one of the brethren was making a joke on Facebook saying, oh, it was a sister who, who shared the post of someone saying, I remember the Rastas in Belcom, they were saying they're going to Ethiopia by feet. I Rastas, what happened? You know, two years ago, I think, and it started circulating on Facebook. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what these people are doing? And I wonder if we can ask that brethren, what they're going to say now, you know? Because I don't know what was that um, inspiration. It was heavy. <laughs> yeah. So some of them, they just came back. When they come back, they're not trust us because they went so long. And we don't know what happened along the way. But they scattered. And my cousin also, when he came back, he, he left the trot because he was living with a Chinaman. And remember, they were still young. Yes. So they were exploring everything. So when they come back, he became Rasta again. You know, he's a tribe, tribe, he's Judah, but he's a priest and he's also a businessman and all that. But now I'm happy that he came back to the trot. But when he came back, he did other things who were not out of Rasta. But you know, sometimes you say once a Rasta, always a Rasta. Just not confuse yourself with the environment. Yes, I. Yes, yes I. So since then, since then, we, we have been working, connecting with those elders during that gathering where Bongo time came and so they that, came, that, came that the Monday to the mother how, That connected you to the mother Naya being girls in Jamaica directly? Not as yet, not as yet, not as yet. It okay. took some time because that time it was only elders now centralizing the, the country. The Nyabingi, they must come together. They must form a national Rastafari council because there was no lot of tribes that time when Bongo time came. It was 12 tribe and the Nyabingi. I, and I remember in that gathering, there was only one brethren who was at the, the, the door of the hall. He was a Bobo Ashanti because he had a turban and that yellow garment. And from there, I don't know what happened to that brother. Was he from our province or the other province? I don't know. But since that trod of, of Bongo time, I think it was the year 2000. From 1999 to 2000, between those years, yeah, it was that gathering whereby they were reflecting to say the elders, they did come with the mandate, how do we come together now? So they were going from provinces to provinces, the elders of South Africa. But that gave me opportunity now to link up with the national houses from my province to the other provinces now. Since then, I visited Johannesburg because there was a lot of sisters who was coming from Johannesburg and Johannesburg is closer to where I stay. So I used to go to Grasmere every December. It was a, a the gathering of the the the, the elaboration of RST establishment by Bongo Zatu. So we'll go and chant the bingi there in July. We'll go for the athlete of His Majesty. So every time when I go, I was just having the excuse of saying I'm going somewhere. And then I got a little bit of the freedom when I was at the college. Because when I was at the college is when I can express myself. This is how I wear. Not unlike when I was at the high school, whereby I still wear the uniform when I go in the house, I must change and whatnot. So gradually, I, I started to attend the church locally because Saturdays was a little bit simple. I will cook a living bread when the parents are sleeping. But my grandmother, they, when they're sleeping, I'll cook the food for the Rastas for tomorrow. And in the morning, everything is clean, 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 clean. But they will have, they will enjoy the Rasta food. But my grandmother, every time, will complain, Who oh, are you cooking so many things? Should she see? Why are you wasting my electricity? This and that, this and that. I used to cook, I used to cook a lot, you know. And I would carry food to the gatherings, wherever where we are going. And then later, later, I managed to visit um, other houses, going to the trips, the same mission. 
and now I get more light, I see other reflection of our way of life because where I come from, it was more of like, you know, a village lifestyle and the urban uh, areas uh, lifestyle, they're not the same, you know, like that gap to see, okay, fine, things are happening like this. People so, are, because so, where I come from, people, they were. So you're, you're more in a rural um, uh, community. The, the province itself, but not uh, really where I come from, because there's the, the Jerusalem side is the eastern side of the province. The province yes. is also big. So where I am, I'm not at the rural place, but I'm at the, what do you call this? It's a rural peri urban and the urban. Sometimes I'm in the middle, whereby it is not cows and things that you see in the streets, but my province have the other side that is like that, you know? Okay, so, okay. So you yeah, don't have like you I'm don't saying, have you're not you're not close to a lot of wildlife and stuff like that. Not no 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 no, but not so far from me. You get to get those places whereby it's a resort. They capture them there, so you only yeah. see them when you go and pay. Yeah, yes, I. Pay, yes. So what what mm. what 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 but what kind of animals naturally do you see in your area? Like in my area, I have deer. We have foxes, we have squirrels, we have all kind of animals. And in, in, you know, even though I'm in the, in, the, in the Washington D.C. city, what kind of animals would you see where you are from in your region? Do you have um, any animals that you would sight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we have a uh, horse. This is like a, a, a pet, a dog to us. We have cows, we have sheep, we have donkeys. The wild animals. You can say the zebras. We have zebras, we have lions, lots of lions. We have cheetahs, where I come from specifically, uh, free state. You got cheetahs, flamingo, uh, the best flamingo if you know it. You got crocodiles, hippopotamus, you know, you got um, giraffe, ostrich. You see them around even the, the gas station, filling station. Every time you have the animal things at the back most of the that's, what I, yes, on that's the... what I mean because I know that regardless you wildlife and people come into contact but like in Jamaica they have Naya Bingi in the bush you know you go up in the in the hills in the bush how how does that work in Africa where you have real wild animals you know snakes and <laughs> different things I yes. always wonder how, how the item deal with the bush liberty when I... you have all of these things we are used to the bushes and the snakes. <laughs> like where I am now, it's hot. The snakes come in and out. And they will tell you they're not uh, poisonous. I'll be like, a snake is a snake. I can't take chances. So we are exposed to those things. The owls, the cheetahs, the leopard, elephants. Um, like the other time, not so long, maybe last year early, there was a hippopotamus that was uh, roaming around the location you know, the township, and then people had to get their hazardous things and, like, uh, get alert, don't go around. It was just running around, and it's dangerous because it can break the house, you know? Yeah, because yeah. we have different RDP houses, government houses. Yeah. And, and hippopotamus, <laughs> they so kill the most people in Africa. Too. Hippopotamus is kill the most people in Africa, you know? They're the number one people Come killer. Again? Hippos are the number one people killer in Africa. Of all the wild animals. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they're very dangerous. Yeah. Yes, I because sometimes I don't know how do they get to to to, to be out of their things, their cages and whatnot. Because I remember some few years ago we had the the Nyabingi Youth Council Summit or something in, in KwaZulu Natal in Deben. Yo, one of the morning, these people were chasing the hippopotamus because it was running also from where we don't know, but it was like these white people now wants to steal it because they see that it's just running alone. So that means maybe the owner is looking for it or it just escaped from somewhere or what, I don't know. So they were chasing it with a gun uh, inside those cars, the safari cars, you know. So sometimes it's a challenge, but they're natural. They're the monkeys. You see monkey everywhere, like in most of the national roads, you see the monkeys. Sometimes in the dinghy at the Judah Square, You'll have your idol there. Two minutes, the monkey came and chow your, your food. <laughs> so sometimes they'll say, you must close the doors. Please, because when they see food, they behave like people. They go inside the yard and they'll jump and take your food just like that. So wow. we're exposed to this all of these animals, but 
uh, it depends on the regions. Like here in Northwest, they're used to the snakes. But us, who don't, uh, who was born, who was not born there, we're not going to get along easily with the snakes. Unlike them, when they come to us, we are used to the ostriches, but you know, ostriches can fight you. You know, they use their meta security in most yes. of the, the companies, the big companies. They have ostriches as their security and they know they're so oh, Wow, so, wow. Yeah, like man, it's usual thing. It's a common thing that you we, we don't get surprised by that because that is how they've been doing it. But someone like you see it's a surprise. But the animals that you say fox, I don't remember. I don't even think I'll see a fox in my life. You know, <laughs> example. I have them. I have them in so, my area. We have coyote. We have fox. We have deer. We have you know hawks, eagles. One of the things that people don't realize is America have a lot of wildlife and. You know, they've been cleaning up the rivers here and the ecosystem. So the wildlife is coming even more um, into the city. We had a black bear in D.C., you know, a bear wow. that what came wow. into the city um, not too long okay. ago. So these are things. But I, I, I love wildlife. So, you know, when I when I go to Africa, it's all, you know, I'm always looking out to see what I can see because the motherland, you know, Jamaica... Yeah. Jamaica, we, we really don't have too much things that can hurt you in the bush in Jamaica. You know, Jamaica don't have no big snakes. You know, we have the Jamaica boa constrictor, but they're harmless. You know, we have iguana, we have different By the things. way, yeah. okay. Yeah, they're, they're harmless, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's Go nice. Ahead. Go but, ahead. But again, they're missing out. <laughs> they're no, we missing come out. Home. We're coming home. They do have, we do have yeah. crocodile in Jamaica though. We have crocodile, but the American crocodile that they call it is much more, they're, they're much nicer than Nile crocodile. You know, they don't eat people mm -hmm. as much like yeah, Nile yeah, yeah. crocodile. Yeah, Nile crocodiles will go after people, you know? So that is beautiful. Mm. But talk to us about, you know, how did you as a little girl see Haile Selassie the first, you know? How did that, um, relationship to the divinity you know how did you 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 manage that thought and and, and what what were the things sure. about Lassie that you love yeah the way it started I didn't know uh the difference uh around uh, ja because they were using the word ja a lot and Rastafari or ja ja you know, they will say ja, ja. So I saw the brethren with the man, the, 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 the pendant with the, the the face of his majesty, the coronation. Who is this king now? And he told me he's Haile Selassie. I had to cram the name. I don't know for how long because I was not used to that name and the, the, the pronunciation and the meaning is Ethiopia. It was a little bit difficult, but I was curious and asking of everything, you know. And then later... I don't know after how long I also learned the meaning or actually who is Haile Selassie, you know, because everything I must digest and then try to reflect and research and all that. And then later, 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 I don't know after how long it is when I can put up the map to say his Imperial Majesty, he's a greater, greater, <laughs> you know, uh, son, who is his grandfather, his uh, father, those I have learned uh, maybe after a decade or something. Because remember, I had to 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 be like under underground Rasta and being a girl, and then the challenges. Yes, yes. Hey, it was too much, too much, too, and the drama. Oh, I used to be called for meetings. You know, I was very traumatized. But I told myself when I cried to say, one day you will understand why I chose to be a Rasta. And I will still be a Rasta because they are accusing me of being influenced. While those people they're saying I'm influencing them, I'm actually conscientizing them. I'm teaching them about Rastafara and Bona. They are thinking that these people are influencing me. So it was just uh, that I even love that I had with this picture. First of all, the way it was so majestic. His Imperial Majesty with the accepts and the crown, and now his name, and now the name is Amharic. I must cram the name. After some time, I learned the power of the Trinity. Oh, power of the Holy Trinity. Okay, reflection from the Bible. <laughs> you know, every time reflection, the most thing that was making me to go easy. Ah, sounds about King of Kings and uh, uh, Haile Mapa uh, with his name that rides upon the heavens, calling by his name Jah. Ooh. 
Now I get more. I'm arming now. Ay, 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 ay. That they say he was written King of Kings. When I read Revelation, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and His Majesty. Now, when I come to the point of coronation, is when I was reading about the gong because I used to have jahags and whatever the messages that I will get from the brethren. Now, when I was reading about uh, the gong also and him proclaiming that His Majesty is the King of Kings, people must look into Africa, like Mosiah Gavi said, people must look into Africa. That thing also, I was reading it for some time, but for me to visualize it and link it, like really, it took me some time again because I'm just reading, reading, reading and not putting it into the pictures whereby I can imagine these are the real people. If it's not like the Bible, I'm reading about other people that I don't know, you know, but there's a lot of people that the names there in the Bible, I don't know. So even also at some level, when I was reading about Rastafari, I was thinking that there are things I will never know, that I cannot prove like tangible. But when I see these things are practical, I once a Rasta, always Rasta, hailing from the Nyaving, it was just like that, hardcore. Nonetheless, eh, you don't know. Being active, because now this thing I build within myself, I seek, I have a standing within myself, and then I have the space now I created for the the King of Kings because of the I have a standing that I have. Remember about Empress Menon? I don't know after how many years I learned about Empress Menon. <laughs> and it was worse now when I was now having the whole ever standing about the majestic and the divinity of his imperial majesty. Reading from uh, uh, the, whole, the, the the promised key about uh, uh, the gong, Leonard Pearl Howell getting to jail, being accused that he's mad. I'm like, no. These people are not fair. But for me, I never thought like it happened in Jamaica, actually. Yeah. In reality, you know, that thing I learned after. So for me, it took me some time like that. It took me some time like that to understand it like that. Till I was sure to say, if I say, yes, my God, my King, it is his Imperial Majesty, Emperor. Before we used to say, ja, ja, ja. and we say, highly Celestia, we don't think of his, his Imperial Majesty being Lishtafari growing and having these things and whatever to the yeah, legend, yeah, yeah. to King of Kings. That was another story that I had yeah. to discover by yeah. myself because every time I get opportunity, I ask. Every time I get opportunity, I read and I will I will put the papers, I'll put everything there, you know. So since then, since then, I just knew about the Nyabingi. I see the pictures of His Majesty with the two seven seals wearing white from the head here, like Orthodox. You know, those pictures, for me, they give me power because now I'm thinking like, whatever this thing that it is, I see from His Majesty, he's portraying that. So I was easily adjusting and accepting His Majesty without doubt and this movement of Rastafari that we are called by his name. And I was listening to Bob Marley, the uh, Survivors uh, album. You know, I grew up listening to that. And then Exodus, yo, Benny Spear, Men in the Hill culture. You know, those were the roots reggae that I was like, and also uh, Russ Michael, reading to listening a lot of Russ Michael and Russ Ivy now. I got introduced to the music of Russ Ivy with the Centenary album. And then later when I read in Jahak, I see the pictures, the name Russ Ivy always come in, come in. Oh, and at that time when these elders are coming through Elder Jabulani, hey, I want real things, remember? <laughs> I knew this movement is a real movement. I said myself, yo, I want to meet Russ Ivy one of the days because we always listen to the Bingi chants, the way he sings and the way in the local house, the way they sing, I used to have a problem with that to say, no, 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 no. this is not how things should go, you know, because those who came before us, they, they've been keeping like this. So we should, we should just continue. It's attenuation, nothing new under the sun. So yeah, I just have the love of Rastafari like that and defending his name and keeping the suppose. Later, I read about Mama Farika Behani and read about Mama Baby I, yes. you know, and Congo Roki, Mama Mashante, and the Jahats, where they were saying about the Bingi daughter and the bingy man you know how you should the conduct so those were the daily bread that was feeding me a reticle just reading those and actually seeing them in pictures like hey old people every time they say this and that at home that i'm influenced i said no there are those who have been rastas before i you can see you know it's not and when they see that oh there's elders also here it also triggers a trigger something to them to to be eager to learn because later fast forward when before my mom passed she was now transforming to be a vegetarian. She wanted to grow her logs, you know. And my 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 uncle used to listen to reggae, 
because some of his LPs, the vinyls, I will take his vinyls, he will be having One Love, he'll be having some of other albums, you know, I will listen for Peter Tosh, and that inspiration just came. But it was just a personal journey that one had to, to, to have the, the fire within, you know, that kept on spanking and spanking till the, the, the light can be out there and people start to acknowledge, everybody loves me suddenly now. I'm also the best one in the family because being consistency and all those things. And now other people learn now that Rastafara is not the way the brethren used to be. Actually, there's Rastas who were like Jaladies, they call us Jalady. There's Jaladies also, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't even talk about Empress Men in that time. I could just say whatever that I'm saying because yeah, I have yeah, my own yeah. fact. You know, yeah. So, and so... then later now, Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, go ahead, continue. I was saying, yes, later when we were reading, we saw the picture of the mother now. Now we must ask because most of the time it was just that picture of his imperial majesty. I think it's because whoever that was doing the art or whoever that came and sell those pendant or whatever, he was just having that image of his imperial majesty. And the brethren where we were staying, they were not in that level of being creative and do such art and craft. It's very scarce. Even now, I cannot, I can point one or two who are really doing the art and craft as a, a, the industry or the, the way of making money, you know. But now, later we get exposed to Empress Men and, and I had a t-shirt now. On this t-shirt, I, I, I wrote, I asked one brethren to paint it, the, the image of, his, of Empress Men and was at a college. I think I was at a college or still in a high school. And then I said he must, he must write, she been queen, you know. <laughs> she been queen, I remember, with a ganja leaf font yeah and then i started to read about empress menen queen omega queen omega queen omega later i learned about the coronation now okay. when i was already free and all that i learned about coronation that okay empress menen actually she's the empress of the empire it's not just queen day because i was just thinking queen omega queen omega like that but then later i learned what empress menen is the balance the royal balance and then She's the one that has been uh, with his imperial majesty, being crowned with majesty and what, 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 what. Now I start to raise these things in the church because the being remembered was only the brethren and it was few Rastas who was having empresses and the empresses will only come because Jaman is going there. There's yes. no prophecy, there's no reading, there's no anything. All they know is just to breastfeed the children, have children, breastfeed the children. That was the issue. That's all. But later we had sisters cancel. We're trying to do some works. The sisters, they will be doing some art and craft. They, they, they were very good. They started to go for sewing and all those things. And then we find that the brethren, when you go to church, we say you must heal up the balance. It's a problem. Nah, sister Mimi, she's going a lot. She wants to come with these things wherever where she comes from. Uh, she wants to come and post these things. We've been here. There's no modification. We want to modify things. Hey, if you really want to chant, because I'll be traveling, coming wherever I come from, I want to teach them this chant and this tune must be the correct tune. I will say, no, sisters must not lead the chant. So there have been lots of, lots of oppression because it's Sister Mimi this, Sister Mimi that. Now they're denying everything, everything, whereby they are saying we are coming with the, the new order, the kingdom now. We want okay. to heal the kingdom. It's not going to happen. They don't want the, the, the picture of the empress at the altar at some houses, you know? So, so the eye is a rebel. The eye is a rebel. The eye is a rebel, um, Sister Mimi. You're a rebel. <laughs> yeah, if that is the rebel, maybe. Yes. <laughs> a rebel with a cause. <laughs> rebel with a cause. So, a so, with a cause. So, but I know, know even 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 in Jamaica, I know it's it's recently that you will see Empress Menin and the coronation Aisha on the altar, um, you know, in the last probably 20, 30 years um that that came about. So um so you're saying that what what is the state of the relationship between the Rastafari man and the Rastafari woman in South Africa? Are there a lot of families, Rastafari families? Or what, what is it yes. like? Yes, there's a lot of families. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot because Rastafari population in South Africa, I don't want to lie, we are plenty. We are plenty. Even though <laughs> there's there's changes now because of the challenges and the growth. Because remember when you rise alone as a teenager and you've been rebellious, rebelling against everything. And then later, you when they used to, the brothers used to say the school is a Babylon 
uh, uh, school, Babylon brainwash education. So most of them, they were dropping from the school. They were dropping, 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 dropping. Those who were busy with the prophets, they were dropping from school because they say it's a Babylon system and they will have their own facts to say they teach us this instead of that. But they don't have alternative of creating our own institutions whereby we can also institutionalize our movement and our knowledge, applying our indigenous knowledge system and whatever, even though you don't go to the colleges or whatever, but have your own way of doing things to reflect to what his imperial, his imperial majesty said also about education. So now we found that, wow, the families were there, very nice. The couples were there first. I guess it was the brethren first, and it was couples. And then children were born in because you don't use any contraceptives. That one, no mistake. So you have a lot of children, and the brethren don't work. And then you find the sisters, they are trying, but they're not equipped or developed in that level to say, from doing this, suing, create some work for yourself, do things in this way to make money, not to have the skill, because most of the time they were just doing things to have the skill, and then they don't really live by that skill, you know, and the, the brethren don't give them enough support. So later, you find that 50%, or let me say, benefit of a doubt, 30% dropped from being Rastafari in terms of way of life and the conduct. <clears throat> and that time, my apologies, that time, the youths are growing because you talk about the youth who have maybe three years finished their universities, but they are not rastas, even though those who are still in the primary schools and whatever, they are not rastas because their mothers and fathers did not prepare for their education because if they prepare for their education, they will fear the most high and they will know whatever that they do, they do under the ban of red, gold and green. They keep the vow, it must be like that. But for them, first thing, they're gonna be the kids of their grandparents because the grandparents are the ones who are more flexible in terms of assisting financially because maybe they've been working or whatever. So you find that today, the Rastafari families, they are not as before, but they're still there, you know, but they don't hold the faith, they don't participate. People that started to drink alcohol, they cut the logs, they wear this, they wear because of the frustrations, because remember what I've said before, it was patriarchal radical way of life, rebellious way of life, triple, not even triple R, seven R, repatriation, rebel, whatever, the R, the seven, you can imagine. So yeah. it was that kind of a thing. Now Militant. later, yes. hey, and that militant did not work for us because yeah. now check, there's no school, we're still struggling to, to, to open institutions, whatever the level of it, you got one, a, a, a kindergarten there, one kindergarten there, one center there, and the country is so big, you know. So when I'm seeing one one, I don't mention a lot of five institutions that I can say Rastafari, we are running it as a collective, either health, social, education, economic. No, we are not there, but individuals, individuals, we are there, we're good. The families are there, we still accept each other. And even when they go to the gatherings, they wear IRA. Sometimes they don't even go, the parents, they leave them behind, you know? So that kind of situation. But I think if, you know, like times move differently, we find that there's this decade of this, whereby their kids were going to school, they were having challenges, they must work for them. And then the kids must also go to school. After school, there's nothing the parents, they prepared. They must also look how do they get on or move on with their lives. But later, they can still see Sister, sister Mimi there, whoever that is doing what they, they still have the confidence to say that our, our parents' way of life is the right one. But then we don't participate, you know. They are just there, they don't participate. But we still have families who are holding strong, who are still keeping the isopoles, who are running their industries that you find the kids are there, they're disciplined, they still do activities within Rastafari way of life, being entertainment, curriculum, ed education-wise or technical wise We still have those disciplined ones that are still trying to, to hold the faith, you know? But the parents, they're even soft. They're not like before in the, 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 the two decades ago or something. But now the kids, they still feel like, ah, we, we belong here. This is where we belong, you know? So they, there's hope. There's yeah, hope, it's just that they want to, what, what I see, I always, remember I always say, Africa awaits its creators from home and abroad, so that we can rebuild and 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 and, and find our, reclaim our spaces, uh, the royal ones who are called by his royal name, you know. So it's one of those things whereby people still have hope, they just want to see something and then they can join, it's that type of vibe, yes I. 
Uh, and I think that that's our generation, because you're not, you know, I'm a little bit older than the I, but our generation job is to build the institutions. You know what I mean? The elders came to establish the faith. Now, mm -hmm. I and I generate mm -hmm. that time is to build the institution, to build the hospitals, the schools, the, you know, um, to be the engineers, the architects, the attorneys, all of those things. This is our generation mission, you know? So I look mm -hmm. forward to working mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. This interview is going to inspire a lot of people globally because to hear what's happening in South Africa, okay. the lessons learned. Um, now we need to implement the teachings of His Majesty. You know, um, that is what that yes, is. Yes, I. We have to implement the teachings of His Majesty. You know, the Bible is there as a foundation, but the Bible doesn't give us instruction how to build in a modern time. His Majesty give us the instruction mm. for time. You know what I mean? So, in, in terms of the, the, the speeches of His Majesty, are they being um, read in South Africa by the family right now or are ones more gravitating around the speeches at this time now? Yes, I. Yes, I. We are enforcing. <clears throat> we are enforcing that whenever we've got opportunity because... Uh, the priests and some brethren, sometimes they foresee that. But every time when once and once a day, we are trying to remind them, this is how we should go. There's no way that you can start everything with the Bible only without uh, going through the teaching of His Majesty. So that has been something that we have been introducing and making sure that we do that because that also talks to us in this time. It's reflecting to the realities of these days, like where are we, what are we doing? We don't talk about the Israelites in Egypt and Nile River somewhere. We're talking about us now coming back home and rebuilding and saying the hungry must be fed, the naked, though there should be those institutions yeah. that yeah. can actually articulate that, you know? So, yeah, we, we are trying, like I said, we are trying because there's there's a lot of works happening, just that you don't have the collective way. There's a RNC that the, the is trying to, to do, but still you'll find that the, 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 the way things are going is not the way we should be or where we should be actually because some still hold back because they have their own reasons about the way things run. But if we can have some collaborations, because I can attest to the ice to say the land is not a problem. There's lots of lands and the ice control the lands. In the Eastern Cape, there's a Kamola land, there's Bonaji Sea, there's um, Queen, King Alpha and Queen Omega in Krasmere, there's Jerusalem, there's Kwandebele, there's, I'm talking about regions and regions, just in South Africa, there's a lot. And they are under the chiefs. And the chiefs are not like government. Whereby government, they, they they want this, they want the chief, they just give you the piece of the land as much as you want. They don't sell you the land, they give you permission to use the land. So there's a lot of potential that actually through, like you're saying, through the channel, we can follow up and really come up with something that we can do very fast because everything is ready. Every, it's like that uh, phrase they say, come to Zion, come to Zion, everything is ready. So it is that way that the South Africa is a gateway to Africa, wherever where we want to go. It's a good start whereby things are a little bit easy in, and government is very easy in Rasta. You know, it's unlike before, whereby to, for you to perfect split it's a problem. Now you are allowed to have 10 trees in your position. You know, you can travel, you can consume, you can plant. So it's some of the, the benefits whereby we just need those ones who are interested in terms of the economical viability. Because some of the Asians in Jamaica, they wish to come, but they cannot make it. So it's one of the things that we can look upon to say, how do we bridge the gap by coming with the, 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 the projects that we can incorporate some of our organizations and the works that we are doing just to complement that these things are possible you know because even currently you know i'm i'm, I'm working with the empress of zion yes i do lots yes. of work with the empress let, of let, zion let's big up queen mother moses, with queen mother moses, queen mother moses. Yeah. that's how i met sister <laughs> mimi too the, the, the honorable queen mother moses so give thanks um for give her time. most travel give time, give so far i in the history of the movement queen mother moses set the most plain Without a doubt, yes. without a doubt, yeah. Now, <laughs> now she summoned me to do some some work. I must train some youth, the maroon youth in Jamaica. 
and some there's some sizzlers foundation she was telling me that i must come and teach these youth and and teach them how, how to create money doing ganja products without them just smoking it because every time just puff 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 because that was the elders have been doing so she was like ah sister you have a license to grow what 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 please you must come i was like no problem so in the next moon we are looking forward to have some uh for under the africa day africa month to have that unity um cultural exchange programs she's coordinating that on behalf of the empress of zion and some foundations in jamaica so yeah the the the, the struggle continues because at the end of the day we don't want to be doing rustations but we want to see things happening you know so we just give thanks for this technology that you can still connect and be the living testimony to say that yeah africa with its creators and it's never late it's never late to come right. no matter you you yeah <laughs> yes i no no i i want to ask the, i a, a, a serious question we here in the west hearing that south africa have one million to three million rastafari um brethren and sisters sister mimi you are there you grew up there is this you think that is accurate that there are over a million to three million Rastafari, you said there are plenty, but in your iris, you know, moving around, what what do you think that number is accurate? Ah, yeah, yeah. I, it's a tricky one because now, if they're talking about those numbers, that means I must count those ones who are the children of the Rastas who are not the Rastas. If I must go to millions, yeah, can I? I must count those ganja men who always come and puff ganja and go to the gathering because they buy, they buy ganja from us, then they hate me saying I'm going to the gathering. And then those ones, then when we have festivals, they come and the number one fans, they're always there to talk about Rastafari, but they take the alcohol and do whatever, whatever. Because really and truly, if you are saying, uh, we talk about the Rastafaris who are having belonging, where they belong, no matter the structure or the movement. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're exaggerating. Whoever that was coming with that number, he was just maybe making estimations, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rough estimation. We are not even million Rastas in South Africa. Uh -uh. I don't want to say, but I know we are plenty. It's not like I'm belittling, because some of them, I've said this many times to say, yeah, we are not even a million in South Africa, because if you're saying a million, where is the stats? Prove to us, because I have traveled a lot. I know in one province, I cannot get like, because we have nine provinces. For us to do a million, for example, how you should divide that. So I cannot say in how we have 200 uh, rasters. Or in Free State, we have 150,000 rasters. No, 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 no. We are plenty. Like I was saying, uh, these reggae mu uh, musicians, they come and they get overwhelmed by the, the outcome of people who are attending. And that you can see that these people are the rasters. They're not just the reggae lovers. But we are not 3 million. Uh -uh. That one, I always fight with them to say, whoever that was saying that it was maybe marketing us for people to love us or they give us attention, I don't know. <laughs> but we are plenty. I don't want to lie. You yeah. see, uh, if you check the matches in Cape Town, if you check Mama Beast, Aineral, is a final a, a, a farewell you can see that in one place how many how much rasters can gather so you can just multiply that with other regions other regions there are plenty of regions because the provinces are nine so the regions can be about 35 to 40 maybe of the regions because my provinces are nine and in my region uh, in my province i have five regions in another province they have about uh, maybe eight or something and they have cities and towns sub under those regions that is where the people are so i don't even really know in terms of the uh, exact number but i can just estimate i'm even afraid to say 500,000 because i like to be realistic but we are plenty i cannot say in numbers yes. but in the world in the world if i can say i must give the person i can say south africa is 99 percent of majority of rastas you know in percentage yes, i can yes, say yes. that because 500,000 is still holy as it said still plenty um more than 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 any other population you know what i mean that we know of mm -hmm. um and, mm -hmm. and you're counting in terms of hardcore rastafari ones where hold the liberty you know um so mm -hmm. she, she was saying that if we count every you know the wide you know the, the hangers on and the the ones who are just there for the culture and their you know the when, follow follow <laughs> yeah follow follow then we can get to the million numbers um, but you hear that family, that's why the Lion Voice Network is so critical because this 
reasoning is going around the Rastafari community and we don't talk to people in South Africa about this. You know what I mean? So um, mm -hmm. we are bringing our brothers and sisters. And again, I'm going to have a lot more Africa content on this platform. We're going to talk a lot okay. more with our family on the continent. Um, so tell us, what is the state? I have another interview, so I cannot stay too much longer, but tell us what is the the state of, um, of, of Rastafari in South Africa today? And then just give us some final sounds for the global family. Yes, I, yes, I will be as quick as I can. Um, as the Bingi order, there have been a provincial gatherings whereby the pairing for the national general meeting that will be announced maybe in the next uh, next elaboration. And yeah, there have been Sabbath observance. Every Sabbath, the houses are still keeping the Sabbath. And most of the houses are struggling to have their monthly meetings in numbers in the way they should be. But then at least something is happening. And then there's there's events and there's, uh, there's festivals. That once and once are organizing. And yeah, there's a ganja issues whereby we have Rastafari brethren and sisters who are into the ganja running. And really and truly in on the ground level, they're still limiting the information because I just called from one brethren in Cape Town and he's explaining about the here about uh, this uh, government thing for ganja. And there are some ones and ones who are saying they're representing the, the, the communities, they have their people, but the people on the ground, they don't know. So it's one of those things whereby there's a lot happening, activities with the government and some fundings and the ganja since it has been legalized, you know. So that is what has been happening more time. And then there's those ones who are building tabernacles and there's some Asians who also came like Asian Rainbow. He's still here in South Africa and he's the fifth year now. We need to assist him in terms of like what uh, permit can he have because his visa now expiring i think august this year so he was trying to reach out to about empress june and whoever that can come on board and assist him in a way but even myself i need to reach out to him and find out what is happening so in overall i can say there's a lot of potential uh, 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 works that we can do in the motherland the the only challenge is that the country is too big and uh, since we've been growing from from the youth stage now we have the mothers and then we also have some personal challenges whereby you find that things are not unfolding the way we're expecting because us as women we are the hard workers and we expect you more but then nonetheless we're still keeping the faith strong so in overall i can say i think we should have the follow-up of this session whereby we can include other hydrants and then we can have a, a panel discussion in terms of like um how can we we remove repatriation with economics you know and cultural exchange and how can we put the time frames and what is one or two projects that we can embark on so that uh, in three months time or so or something we can see this channel having it's a platinum level now, wherever where the one items want to push it, you know, because we're going to have local ones also marketing and saying we're going to be there, tune in, and then we have more subscribers because really and truly this should be penetrating in South Africa because the works the items are doing, they're out of this world. It's what we are hoping bring the hope actually to I and I also who are still keeping strong to say that let's join forces together and move with this torch because at the end of the day, you must reach Mount Zion. Yes, sir. We, we're coming home. Uh, give thanks, Sister Mimi, for the eye. This is just part one interview. Uh, when you come on this platform, just know that this is just the beginning. We're going to have many more interviews with the eye. Um, the eye is officially Sister Mimi. Sister Mimi, I, I'm about to give you a position, you know. The eye is now going to be the official Lion Voice Network ambassador for South Africa. I, I just give you that title then. <laughs> Right now, I thought, I'm, I thought I'm the only Ganja ambassador in South Africa, but yes, now the eyes can be like Mother Moses because we're the volunteer Ethiopian agitating for Rastafari light. That I know will never leave the victory, they never leave the war, ne will never stop till the victory is won. I know yeah. is calling all I to come in your army, yes. So I know say I accept wholeheartedly to say yes. Rastafari time is now. I know we are volunteer yeah. Ethiopians. You know? Yes, yeah, so this episode, um, Sister Mimi, you're going to share it with the South Africa family. Tell them to subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
so we can connect the dots. I'm going to be posting an interview with um, Sister Livet, Sister Walate Georges from the UK on Monday. So I'm touching the UK, we're touching South Africa. We'll get you some dots, we'll get some Ethiopia. We're gonna bring it all on the platform so that the family can see what we are doing and we can do some panel discussions as the I say, how we can move this forward. So, yeah. final word, Sister Mimi, for the global family. Yes, I. the, the road is not uh, soft and easy, but it's for those who can enjoy it. So let's have the faith in Rastafari. Let's make sure that you fulfill the creed in whatever the aspect that you can do. Because remember, every day we must uh, educate those illiterate millions out there, you know. So I will say that yeah, Africa, we always say Africa awaits its creators from home and abroad so those who want to come and we work together i would say let's give thanks and praises to his majesty because he still make it possible for i and i to link in this level so that we can see that we are the ones who are called to fulfill these works yes i give thanks Rastafari. so you hear it straight from the motherland straight from the lioness's own mouth the time has come for the lionesses to tell their own story and this Lion voice. Give thanks, much love. <laughs>